Hi, I'm Mike Coleman, a developer advocate here at Google Cloud. In this video, I want to introduce you to Migrate for Anthos. Migrate for Anthos is a set of tools that inspects existing workloads running in virtual machines and automatically creates the needed container artifacts for modernization. Let me break down that last sentence into two parts and talk separately about where these virtual machines might be running and what types of artifacts Migrate for Anthos creates. Migrate for Anthos can migrate both Windows and Linux applications. Windows applications can be running on a Google Compute Engine VM. In addition to Google Compute Engine, Linux applications can also be hosted on-prem with VMware vSphere, AWS EC2, and Azure VMs. In Migrate for Anthos, where your VM currently resides is called the migration source. For this video, the source will be an application running in a VM on Compute Engine. The output from Migrate for Anthos is a comprehensive set of artifacts that you can use to deploy your newly containerized application. These artifacts include a Kubernetes YAML file that you can use to create Kubernetes deployments and services, a Docker file that can be used to create a new container image, and other YAML files that describe what was actually migrated. Once you have these artifacts, you can deploy the containerized version of your application to an Anthos cluster or to the various flavors of Google Kubernetes engine, including GKE running on Google Cloud, on-prem, or on AWS. So you have an application running on a supported source, and you can use Migrate for Anthos to get it running in a container, but why would you do that? There are several key benefits to migrating your workloads. The first is density. Containers are much lighter weight than VMs since they don't contain the operating system and therefore require considerably fewer compute and memory resources. This in turn allows greater density of workloads across your clusters, fine-grained resource allocations, and overall lower infrastructure costs. Another benefit is security. GKE offers automatic operating system upgrades, freeing you from the burden of maintaining your operating system. You can also augment legacy apps with modern services. GKE allows you to leverage platform add-on services to seamlessly integrate up-to-date functionality with existing apps. For instance, you can take advantage of Istio on GKE or ASM on Anthos to automate network and security policies without changing your application code. Additionally, you can leverage cloud logging and cloud monitoring with your applications. Unified policy and integrated resource management. GKA allows you to focus on managing applications, not infrastructure. It offers the power of declarative desired state management with powerful tagging strategies and selector policies. You can also move to modern image-based management and orchestration. Migrate for Anthos offers a unique capability to extract an application from the VM workload and construct a Docker image and related artifacts, which in turn allows you to modernize the application lifecycle and operations management. This could include integrating with a CI CD pipeline using tools like Cloud Build to implement day two maintenance procedures. Furthermore, image-based management enables customers to use GKE to perform rolling updates, dynamic scaling, self-healing, and more. So now you have a general idea of what Migrate for Anthos does and why you might choose to use it, let's jump into an actual migration. Migrate for Anthos has three primary components. The discovery tool, which assesses how successful a migration of a given application might be, the Processing Cluster, a Kubernetes cluster that is used to examine the source VM and create the migration plan, as well as execute the actual migration. And MIGCTL, a command line tool like kubectl for interacting with the Processing Cluster. MIGCTL is already installed in Cloud Shell. A migration generally consists of the following steps. And don't worry if you're not sure of what each of these steps actually means. We're going to get into that as we move through this video series. First, you need to create a Google project, set up service accounts, and enable appropriate APIs. Next, you create a migration processing cluster. Then you go into the process of choosing and qualifying your targeted workload. Once you've done that, you can define your migration source using MIGCTL to create a migration plan. Then you adjust that migration plan to ensure that it meets your needs. Then you create the deployment artifacts, and then you can deploy your newly containerized application. In the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about the first two steps, since they are largely the same whether you are deploying Linux or Windows applications. I will cover the remaining steps in subsequent videos. Now that we have the migration process laid out, let's jump into setting up the prerequisites for a migration. 
Migrate for Anthos requires two service accounts. The first service account is used by Migrate for Anthos to access container registry and cloud storage. You will use this service account when you install the Migrate for Anthos components and it requires storage admin permissions. The second service account enables Compute Engine as a migration source and it requires computer viewer and computer storage admin rules. I will actually create this service account in a follow-on video, but I wanted to make sure you were aware of it. In addition to the two service accounts, you will enable the following APIs that are shown on the screen. The next prerequisite we need to deal with is the processing cluster. As mentioned before, a processing cluster is a GKE cluster running the actual code that analyzes the source VM and creates the deployment artifacts. So I will create a one node cluster here in the console. The cluster itself is a pretty standard cluster. We're going to name it processing cluster. We're going to put it in US West 2, which is the same location as my VM that I'm going to migrate. Uh, under the default pool, we're going to change that to one node. We only need a single node. And then for the actual nodes, just a couple of things, uh, Ubuntu image type and the N1 standard for machine type. So with those configurations, we're ready to click Create, and that will go off and that will build our cluster. Now, this is going to take a couple minutes, so we'll fast forward the video and we'll check back in when that's finished. Okay, it looks like the processing cluster is ready to go. So the next step is to actually install the Migrate for Anthos components. So we'll come up here, we'll click into Anthos, Migrate to Containers, and we'll come up here and we're going to add a processing cluster. So click Add Processing Cluster, and we're going to come down Linux Workloads, and we're going to select that processing cluster we just created, click Next, and then we're going to run a series of commands in Cloud Shell. And the first one is going to be to enable the APIs I mentioned before. So we'll copy that, paste that in, and those APIs will get enabled. The next step is to go ahead and create the service account that's going to allow us access to the container registry and the storage, cloud storage. So we'll paste that in and create that service account. Then we're going to go in and we're going to assign the storage admin role to that service account. So we'll paste this command in. That'll create the, uh, the role binding. Then we're going to go in and we're going to download the JSON key so that we have that to authenticate to the necessary services as we go forward. And then finally, let's clear the screen. It's getting a little crowded. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the installation process of actually uh, uh, creating the Migrate for Anthos components on the cluster. So the uh, using MIGCTL, I do a MIGCTL setup install, and it goes through and it adds all the necessary components to perform the actual migration. This will take just a couple seconds to finish up. All right, so now I can run MIGCTL doctor, and that'll tell me the status of my installation. Okay, let's check again here with MIGCTL. And MIGCTL is reporting back that the deployment has completed successfully, and we're now ready to perform an actual migration, which we're going to do in our next two videos. We're going to have one on migrating Linux applications and the other on migrating Windows applications. To recap, in this video, you learn the benefits and features of Migrate for Anthos, as well as how to configure the prerequisites. Be sure to like and subscribe because we'll be posting subsequent videos in this series, including how to migrate Linux and Windows applications, as well as best practices for evaluating your applications and what considerations you need to be aware of when planning a migration. And to get started on Migrate for Anthos today, visit cloud.google.com migrate anthos.